yeah, El Salvador is going to be setting an example yeah. Uh, yeah. for for the rest of the world. Mm -hmm. And I think we're going to reach an inflection point where nation states around the world are going to have to decide what direction they want to go. Do they want to go the CBDC, World Economic Forum direction, or do they want to go the decentralized power, Bitcoin direction? And uh, this country is setting the, the, the alternative example. Mm -hmm. It's already uh, started. Yes, and because it's the first mover, it has that first mover advantage. Right. And as those lines are drawn, and we start to see that the, 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 I guess you could say almost bipolar world, uh, the dual system where one is absolute tyranny and the other is mm -hmm. characterized by liberty. Uh, El Salvador having the first move, move on the liberty side is, is going to be sort of the, the, the genesis block of the new world. And we will see, I believe, I hope, uh, as the cynic and pessimist of, our, of us, I still hope that um, we will see El Salvador become known in history for its inventions, its innovations, its contributions uh, that spread around the world and improve the lives of millions or billions uh, into the next uh, century. I'm really looking forward to this chat, uh, Jessica and Ryan. Um, you guys are both from Canada, right? That's yeah. right. Yeah. Yeah. So um, before we go ahead, um, the reason I, you know, I contact you uh, amongst other so-called, I don't know, you, you guys called yourself expats. Maybe you can, because I'm so, you know, forgive me my ignorance, but I'm, I'm uh, what, what does an expat mean actually? Okay. So it's a, it's a short form for, oh, actually, first of all, thank you for having us. Well, yes, thank you. Thank Welcome you. to the it's, show. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's great to be here. Yeah. <laughs> but um, expat is like short for expatriate. Um, meaning we used to be patriots or patriated uh, by our home country, our country of birth. And we have uh, since become expatriates. Uh, for us, um, it means a lot of different things to different people. But for us, I'd say it means uh, it's kind of like a breakup. Yeah. We kind of broke up with Canada, I suppose you could say. <laughs> yeah. For good reasons. For more than yeah. Good reasons. <laughs> yeah. 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 And your audience probably already has some idea of Definitely. what those reasons yeah. are. Yeah. I'm just going to let you talk. I mean, um, why don't you just, you know, uh, go ahead, both of you, you know, sure. your background, your, sure. your, what, what was your desire? What was the motivation, the, the triggering point that, you know, that made you like make those, this, this, you know, uh, extremely, you know, existential decision also, I would say, you yeah. know, because we were thinking also my girlfriend and our, you know, with our two, almost two year old daughter, uh, you know, at that time in Austria, when they were trying to coerce people into taking the vaccine and not yeah. maybe with jail time, but with, you know, high, uh, you know, monetary penalties. I mean, it was just, it was just disgusting. And so they had yeah. to repeal the law and, and we were like panicking and we're like, you know, we got to pack our stuff and just go somewhere. So, uh, so this is where we can from uh, a little bit, but now, you know, everything is more relaxed and w at least we have a, li a little bit more time, <laughs> you know, to sure, plan yeah. and to think ahead, but it's yeah. definitely on our list, you know, El Salvador or just to emigrate out of Austria. Yeah. yeah. But please go ahead and. <laughs> well, yes. Yeah, so like we are, we are just one small part of a very large and growing community here in El Salvador mm -hmm. um, of um, expats and some would say that we might meet the definition of refugee um, insofar as the whole community here has fled one form of political persecution or economic violence or another. Um, we fall into probably both categories um, given our experience in Canada. Um, we came here Actually, you know what? We were just talking about this yesterday. It was quite a year, 2022. Um, <clears throat> the year started off um, in January 2022. We had plans. We had a piece of land purchased, and we had plans to build a house in Nova Scotia. And uh, by the end of 2022, we were in Central America in El Salvador. <laughs> it's a, a long journey. Um, essentially, what happened to inspire that decision was in February, the Prime Minister of Canada declared that the Emergencies Act would be in force. This is a... Um, this, is not, this had never been done before. Yes. Except yeah. for when? Well, there was a different act that was similar that was invoked during like a terrorist attack in Quebec uh, some 50 years ago, 40, 50 years ago. 
uh, but the act was then revised and uh, this was the first implementation of the emergencies act in canada and it was directed toward the existential threat that justified it was um, the working class citizens up. of our own country yeah have yeah exactly canadian citizens had become an existential threat to canada um and uh requiring the suspension of certain limits to the law uh, in order to restore order, uh, they said. And this included, among other things, um, like including actual violence, which happened in Ottawa, where we were not, um, where a woman was trampled by a horse, uh, people were beaten, people, like, a, a reporter was shot in the face with a tear gas canister, um, on and on it goes. Uh, but we in Nova Scotia, we became victims of economic violence uh, insofar as we woke up the morning after the Emergencies Act came into force uh, to, to discover that we no longer had access to our bank accounts. Uh, so that was a sea change. Okay. Yeah. Uh, when, when, you, when you suddenly realize that you can't pay your bills, you can't pay your rent, you can't pay your phone bill, you can't oh, put geez. gas in the car, you can't buy any food, uh, and that one man by the stroke of a pen has taken all of that away from you. Well, it's enough to make you think about breaking up with your country. Let's yeah. put it that way. Yeah. Right. And <clears throat> that immediately set us on that course, uh, this experience. And well, I don't want to talk too long. I'm sure you have questions, but long story short, we, um, we, we were engaged at the time. We started making plans. Three, four months later, we got married. And then a week after our wedding, we boarded a plane uh, after having liquidated everything that we own. And we landed in El Salvador on July 24th, 2022. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That must have been like a very shocking, <laughs> even understatement, but um, th this must have been like, uh, you know, people talk about CBDC, central bank digital currencies, what absolute control, absolute surveillance, absolute like, yes. uh, you know, control of people's lives. You know, this mm -hmm. is like the practical <laughs> Yes. demonstration what what the cbdc could mean right mm -hmm. that's right it's like the trailer before the movie it's yeah. uh it was a preview of what's to come and uh you know like we saw that and we were at the beginning of our marriage the beginning of our lives together and we thought how do we want to live that life do mm -hmm. we want to live in constant fear self-censoring unable to speak uh, how our how we really feel to our friends to our families having to be careful what we say or don't say at work, um, always wondering if your income is going to be shut off again, if your access to your funds is going to be shut off again. Do we want to live in that fear? Or do we, do we want to go to a country where personal liberties, economic liberties and freedoms are being expanded every day? And uh, once we started thinking about it in those terms, it's a pretty easy decision to make <laughs> when you get down to it. Yeah. Right. Before I forget, uh, first of all, congratulations to your wedding and happy new year. <laughs> Thank you. Happy new year to you too. Happy new year. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah, it was not very spectacular last, but you know, we have the, a beautiful view from out of the window. We can see all the fireworks because we're at the top of the hill. I was just, you know, uh, talking uh, to your wife <laughs> while, while you were gone. So uh, we have a you know beautiful environment surrounding. Um, mm -hmm. Um, you know, when when you made that decision uh, to when you both made the decision to go to El Salvador, uh, did you have did you have that feeling or that perspective? Okay, this is this is the country. This is the land where you can imagine. You have the feeling you this is something you know permanent. Like you know, you will feel safe. You will feel uh, welcome. Uh, your property rights will be. Um, I'm already going a little bit into the details, maybe of some yeah, of my yeah. questions, but you know about sure. property rights, because these were the questions that occupied our minds. Like, you know, uh, if we go, you know, should we rent? Should we lease? Should we buy? You know, um, especially for families, for for people with children. You know, is homeschooling allowed? So all these all these questions, you know, uh, popped up in our in our mind, and and it, it, it's you know a lot of existential questions. So, how what was your feeling? Um, well, I can't really speak for Ryan, but I'm sure you can. <laughs> oh, sure I can. Um, yeah. it was definitely something that we had to look into prior before. Um, we had originally set out to go to Mexico, but uh, about a week or two before we 
actually moved, we thought, hmm, like, you know, we were yeah. really into Bitcoin and, you know, we watched some videos on it, did a little bit of research. Um, we had some friends who were already down here who we were in contact with, and it just seemed a lot, there was a lot more action going on here than, um, than what was in the media happening at the time. Um, we would hear a lot of stuff about, like, you know, the gangs and everything that's going on and everything that Naibu Kelly was doing. But um, they, like, we got down here, we took a chance, and of course we were wondering, okay, well, where do we go? What, what, how do we necessarily find an apartment? Um, we've tried looking when we were in Canada, but that turned out to be the wrong idea, the wrong way, to go, the wrong way to go about it, because you really have to be down here to experience, even if you have to, you know, rent an Airbnb for a week or a month to, until you get settled, uh, that option is there. Um, there was a lot of questions about like, you know, are we able to open up a bank account? Like, yeah. how, how will we manage like, getting around, getting a car as like people who are not originally from the country and not really kind of just diving feet first into something we had no idea because mm -hmm. we're, we're from Canada, right? So we're used to cold, snow, uh, weather that's not, as you can see, like mm -hmm. it's January. Like, <laughs> like my birthday's in January, so I'm going to have my first summer birthday yeah, yeah. <laughs> in like 30 some odd years, you know? So um, there was that. There was a lot of questions, a lot of answers, but we're just we just feel really lucky and so blessed that we've we've had contacts down here yeah. to prepare us, um, not just uh, moving down here, but like reassuring us that okay, well, when you get here, we will be here to help you along. Uh, just reassuring us that the fine folks of El Salvador are as nice and wonderful as. As is claimed. As yeah. we have, yeah, yeah, and as we have learned, so. Yeah, like, it, like there, was, there was more questions than answers before we made the leap, I guess you could say. Mm -hmm. um, we were trying frantically to answer all the questions before we left, but we reached a point where it was just, we, we suddenly realized that that's, we're going to arrive with more questions than answers. There's no way around that. Um, and like in terms of safety, um, we didn't really know what to expect. From Canada, we ha El Salvador was a very opaque concept to us. Uh, it's hard to really trust what you're here. Our media was saying that uh, the country was basically a war zone run by a dictator who was gambling the country's money away on Bitcoin. Uh, we knew that wasn't true, but we didn't know what was true in place of that lie, right? Um, we thought maybe, okay, so the gangs are getting under control, but it's still a problem. When we first arrived, we didn't feel totally safe. Um, we, um, we would uh, feel nervous walking up and down the road, uh, but after about, I'd say, two weeks, not even that long, uh, we started to realize that that was all in our heads. That was all the perception of El Salvador that had been put there prior to our arrival. And as we started to sort of settle in, we started just realizing this is, this is just a normal country. It's, it's not different than any other country, really. It has roads and, and houses and water and electricity and infrastructure and bridges. And <laughs> it's a, a normal country, um, <clears throat> except it's a normal country that is embarking upon a spectacular experiment, which we believe is akin to the beginning of the American experiment when the pilgrims first arrived in, uh, at Plymouth Rock there. Well, that's a good comparison, yeah. Um... When did you like, or was it important for you to before you, you know you, you uh, sort of emigrate or move to El Salvador to make contact with other, you know, similar minded or you know, or, or um, would it be Canadian people or not? You know, um, did, or did you try to make contact or you know to sort of bond and and connect with other people? And so you have sort of a you know um, yeah. friendly environment around you. Yeah, Absolutely. yeah, for sure. And I think that 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 helped make the very stressful move here. Yeah, because I'm not gonna lie. It, it's not you get here and we're like, hey, it's great. But it it was, it was not a pretty. <laughs> it wasn't pretty getting from Canada to here. No. It was it was tough. It was stressful. It was a lot of 
like difficult conversations and it really helped having somebody who like i said was either was already here or was going to be there prior to mm-hmm. us arriving and getting the experience kind of getting the ground floor putting in the groundwork for us before yeah we uh we came here Does that answer the yeah. question <laughs> like there are two people in particular who were instrumental to our making the decision to come to El Salvador. Uh, their names are Nikki and James. <clears throat> they have a YouTube channel, uh, Nikki and James in El Salvador. They inspired us to start our YouTube channel, Two People in Paradise. Um, and it was finding them on YouTube and going through their videos. And we started to see, okay, so this actually looks like a tenable option for us. Uh, we reached out to them directly. They generously gave us some of their time on like a, a Zoom call like this. and. They answered some of the, I mean, they can't answer all our questions. There's always more questions than answers. We still have, um, we but, still have questions yes, whenever exactly, we yeah. see them. <laughs> <laughs> like, how do we get our driver's license? But yeah. uh, anyway, um, um, they laid a foundation for us that we could put our feet on and say, okay, we can actually stand here. And if it weren't for them, I don't know if we would have, if we would have been here, if we would have stuck with the Mexico plan. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Um, and uh, since that time, since arriving here, we have discovered that there is a, a huge, huge community of people from all over the world who've come to this country for very similar reasons and who thereby are very like-minded. There's people here from Italy, Australia, New Zealand, the uh, Netherlands. The Netherlands. Uh, obviously, lots of Canadians are here. Uh, lots of Americans are here. But what really actually stands out is that all the time there are people who were born here 20, 30, 40 years ago uh, and who maybe left when they were one, two, three years old, and now they're coming home and sort of rediscovering wow. their uh-huh. heritage and their culture. At the same time, all these foreigners are discovering the heritage and the culture. It's it's really something to be immersed in that and to watch that happen mm-hmm. uh, all around us all the time. It's It's been wonderful. Yeah, yeah. yeah you know, um, uh, just for your information, I mean, I'm originally, I was, I was born in Iran and I went, you know, I came with my father, my father already dead uh, a few years ago, he died, but um, he came with me to Austria in 1979, you know, during or in the middle of this uh, you know, revolution or whatever it's called and with this horrendous regime now taking over. And, and anyway, so, um, and there's, you know, there's like, like a huge diaspora, <laughs> like millions mm-hmm. of, I don't know how many millions and millions of people all over the world, m- most of them, or le- lots of them are in uh, in California, where I lived like for five years. Mm-hmm. So, um, you know, and every Iranian or Persian people I, I meet or have met, they, I mean, I don't know anybody who does not, let's say, you know, hate this, this Iranian, you know, this Ayatollah, yeah. whatever, theocratic regime or whatever it's called. Um, but, um, uh, I mean, people have the desire, you know, to go back to see the country, you know, just for the, for the nostalgic of it or to visit family, but they can't. So, um, so you must've uh, like met, uh, to my question, back to my question, like you must've met like a lot of people who, as you've already mentioned, who either, you know, were born in El Salvador or maybe grew up in the first few years and then, you know, went maybe to the United States or Canada and then came back again. Uh, can you tell a little bit more about those testimonials? Like that would be Regina. Yeah. Yeah. So there's a, a friend, a dear friend of ours here. Uh, her name is Regina and Regina. she popped into head our heads as you were speaking there. Cause first and foremost, there, first of all, there's plenty, there's dozens and dozens that we've met, but Regina has become a dear friend. Uh, she left 47 years ago mm-hmm. when she was just a, a small 18, child. 19? Oh, really? She, yeah. Oh, okay. So she, she went to, uh, yeah, okay. she went um, to study in uh, in school in America. That's right. Yeah. 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 Go ahead. Um, so, yes, um, we interviewed her recently, actually, on the channel, and she sort of gave us her whole story. Uh, she is just over the moon to be here mm-hmm. uh, because she was here long enough when she was young to see the state of the country as it was. And now she's here seeing the state of the country as it is and what it's becoming. And I mean, El Salvador is her heritage. It's her identity. So in some respect, there's a piece of herself that's transforming along with the country. And it's just marvelous to see the relief and the joy 
um, on her face as she watches her, her country and her countrymen um, embark upon this new future. Yeah. Um, and yeah, she's dear, very dear to us, but she's one of a long list of people that we've met and bonded with since we got here. Yeah, and when you're talking to her, it's, it's so magical to see like the spark in her eyes of how excited, like she is, she's a wonderful woman and the way that she speaks about her country as coming back from all those years ago, she's more excited to be here than most expats yeah. coming to here for the first time. Yeah. And it's amazing. And I love to see uh, whenever we're talking to her and her eyes are like, and then it's, it's, it's so exciting for her because, you know, she, I, I like to think how she likes to say, um, how she, how, how much um, has changed with the country for the better that it, that needed to be, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. like it's. Yeah, there's there's a sense of of national pride in El Salvador, and and uh, there's a sense that this is a kind of a new version of that national pride. I, people feel like um, I don't want to speak for Salvadoran people, but there's the sense is that mm -hmm. that. There's a, re a reinvigorated patriotism in El Salvador. Mm -hmm. uh, people are, and this is a stark contrast to how it is in our home country of Canada. Uh, people here are looking to the future and they are seeing good days ahead. Yeah. And it, that gives them confidence, it gives them pride. Uh, complete reverse polar opposite in Canada where people are looking forward and they're seeing dystopia <laughs> yeah. materializing in the future. There's a whole generation in Canada that has given up on home ownership completely. They, it's just they know it's out of reach for them. They'll never get there. Uh, whereas here, there's young people who are their thinking is, I've got to study hard so that I can build something new for my country when I'm older. Mm -hmm. and these are children who are thinking like this. Yeah. It's amazing. It's um, remarkable. Yeah. You know, um, I don't want to get too philosophical, but um, it's. Um, yeah. I think in our society or our civilization, you know, we talk about, you know, as Bitcoiners, you know, we talk about trustless or trust minimized because <laughs> we don't need to trust. There's, it's just uh, uh, sort of we are ruled by rules, not by rulers, you know, as we say. But when we talk about like Bukele and his, let's say, political team, uh, there seems to be our, I have the impression, as I said, you know, you you got to go to El Salvador and make your own experience, like, yeah. right? Uh, but is it something that you feel it's um, the essence of trust, you know, the essence of uh, in every relationship, whatever, you know, whether it be at work or in, in, in your own relationship or uh, in a society, in a, in a community, it's always about trust. Do you mm -hmm. think that people, whether they live there now or been living there or now coming back as expats or not, uh, that this feeling of trust is so strengthened now uh, towards, let's say, the ethos and the mission and the the values of Bukele and you know the whole structure uh, within and around Bukele. Uh, do, do you know what I'm where I'm going with this? Yeah, I, essentially, it sounds like you're asking uh, what the the level of trust right. the population has in. Or Bukele. yeah, or you yourself actually like oh, is there us? something like oh, okay. you know you can see something in 10, 20, 50 years down the road okay. like or is it is the cat out of the out of the bag and. It, it can just only can it, it, everything can only uh, you know get better and better and better. You know what I'm saying? Well, of the two of us, Jessica is definitely the optimist, um, and I'm definitely the cynic. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, the way I, I, do you want to go first, or no? You can go. Okay. I need to formulate uh, my answer. <laughs> sure. <laughs> so, the way I look at it is, could Bukele let us down? Could could he? turn out to be something other than what he seems. Absolutely, that could happen. He's a person in power and power corrupts. That's the nature of it. Uh, certainly, if he's in power too long, no matter his intentions now, eventually it's going to turn sour. Uh, apologies for the truck going by there. Um, so, how to, how to say, um, right now, I look at what Bukele is doing, the actions that are being taken. And just recently here, the mayor of Soyapango was arrested on corruption charges. Uh, she misappropriated some $25,000 or something. Yeah, like that I that read range. about that. Yeah. 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 
Um, I'm sorry um, to interrupt you. It was just a very yeah. uh, fascinating. Um, I really love that statement by Bukele afterwards. Uh, it was yeah. in connection with that corruption case. Sorry to interrupt you. He said something, and I really love that. He said, we are here. I th I th I'm, I'm trying not to paraphrase him really. To, he said, uh, we're here to serve and not to be served. Is that what he said? Something like that? He said, uh, we're here to serve the people, not ourselves. Exactly. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. And and what, what struck us about that was that this person who was arrested was a member of his own party, uh, at the Nuevas Ideas party. Um, that didn't protect her from the force of law in this country. That's new to us. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. There wasn't preferential treatment. The, the, it, it seemed as though um, being part of the party in power was no protection and that it was the, what was legally and morally correct is what was guiding the decisions there as opposed to what was politically expedient. And uh, that kind of thing, it, it really boosts your confidence and it boosts your trust uh, in this government and the direction it's taking the country. Right, Speaking right. Personal, yeah. Mm -hmm. Now there's, there's a wide variety of opinions there, especially among Salvadorans. Um, we have found that, um, I mean, the approval rating is very high. And in our conversations with people around the country, it certainly seems like 85%, 90% is mm -hmm. an accurate number, not a, not a manufactured number like it would be back home. Um, so, um, but there is some skepticism. There's, there's a sense that, and again, this is just our perception, mm -hmm. that the people of this country have been through so much for so long and have been let down so many times that there's a good percentage of the people who, while they approve of Bukele and are optimistic about Bukele, they're waiting for the other shoe to drop. It's it's almost too good to be true, and and there's a there's a sense of reluctance to get too excited about um, Bukele because they don't want to be disappointed. So there's this cautious optimism. Mm -hmm. um, it's I feel like we've only been here about six months, but I feel like that's starting to turn into optimism. Like Independence Day was this outpouring of of patriotic celebration, um, but we still we see it we see it around the country. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, um, let's let's zoom out a little bit before I go into some other questions. Like, um, okay, do, do you see um, do you see for yourself like people um, from not only from all kinds of democ demographics and societies and 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 layers of society? One moment, please. I'm oh, sorry. Yeah. It's, it's, oh yeah, no problem. Yeah, there's trucks yeah. going by outside. Yeah, it's rare for them to be in the neighborhood <laughs> <laughs> on Sunday. Yeah, on New Day. All right, I think they're gone now. Yeah. Okay, okay. please proceed. Yeah. Um, what I was going to say is, uh, do you see, because the way, you know, I, I listen to all these testimonials, you know, I also listen to Max Kaiser, Stacey Herbert. I mean, they're like totally sworn into uh, Bukele because it's like, it's. I have the impression it's like, for, especially for Max Kaiser and Stacey Herbert, uh, uh, who are like, you know, like totally rooted in uh, and, and, and sworn into the ethos and mission of, of hyper-Bukeleization and and Bukele, and um, is it something you see for yourself where you, uh, where, you know, you know, as you, you know, I've, I've been observing, you know, and, and reading all lots of articles about, you know, what's going on in El Salvador, building out the infrastructure, uh, the speed, the rate of speed at which, you know, the, the, the roads are being built, entrepreneurs and investors coming into the country. Do you see that at that rate of speed? Like, like, uh, um, you know, not to talk about Bitcoin City because this is a long-term perspective, yeah. like 10 years yeah. or something, but, but hey, it's exciting. I mean, if you, if, if there's like in 10, 20 years, at least one or two Bitcoin cities in El Salvador, I mean, this could be really a total paradigm shift. You know, uh, you know, uh, you probably, I'm sure you know Jeff Booth. I'm a, I'm a huge fan of Jeff Booth when he talks about, deflationary, you know, uh, Bitcoin, the deflationary money, deflationary technology, abundance, prosperity. Is yeah. that something you, you're you like looking forward to and, and you're seeing maybe literally with your own eyes, like entrepreneurs, investors, the rate of speed with things are being built out. Is that something you, you can, you can witness at the moment? Yeah. 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 I'd say so. Yeah. Like, uh, like we, uh, we've only been in this neighborhood for a month now and there are i don't know how many new houses have gone up uh, just down the road there's two new gas stations already 
Um, a little bit further up the road, maybe five minutes, there's a whole new shopping center that went up. Um, that we accepts have, Bitcoin? Yes, and almost yeah, almost every store in there takes Bitcoin. The, the Puma gas station takes Bitcoin. Um, uh, like we, we are set up right now where we could live our entire lives on Bitcoin and never use cash. We do use a bit of cash uh, just for convenience that some places don't take it or it's like the, the, the milkshake machine at McDonald's. It's not working right now. <laughs> Um, that happens sometimes, and this is just a training issue. It's the first year, right? Yeah. <laughs> so, um, but uh, uh, the highway between here and the city has changed. Uh, man, like everything has changed in the six months that we've got here in terms of its modernization. Yeah. Uh, now, I don't want to overstate it. It's it's we're not we're not in Dubai here. Uh, there is still, um, you know, signs of the old El Salvador is still fully established and, and rooted everywhere. Um, and that means like, you know, like corrugated tin roofs and whatnot. That's around. It's, it's never out of sight. Um, but there is a momentum here and a velocity here that um, and a growth here that is happening while our home country is pursuing a policy of degrowth right. and, uh, and right. slowing down infrastructure development, slowing down and inhibiting small business growth uh, here. That's expanding. Um, and it's not just external investment. It's, it's not just, um, you know, super savvy tech people coming in and creating a startup in El Salvador. It's also regular Salvadoran people, regular working class Salvadoran people mm -hmm. who are opening taxi stands, uh, pupuserias, um, uh, surf uh, shops and surf lesson businesses. Uh, all kinds of little businesses are exploding everywhere. And the thing we keep hearing from these these new and young Salvadoran entrepreneurs is five years ago, I never would have been able to do this because I would have been extorted and taxed out of business yeah. right. and uh, yeah. not anymore. And so this is a place where, I mean, if you want to start a business, mm -hmm. uh, this is a good environment, very friendly environment to start a business. Yeah. yeah. And there's a lot of room for, for a competition in that too. It's mm -hmm. not like you know, cutthroat, like, you know, you got to be the top of the best, You like, yeah. right now, with the gas station that is going on, that has just opened, a new one is going right next to it. Yeah. And there doesn't seem to be, like, any, any type of, like, well, there's competition, because there's competition with any kind of, like, company um, that is going against one another, but you see it, see it even in the market vendors. Mm -hmm. When you go to get your groceries or like on the side of the road That's with the right. coconut stands, there's more than enough room for everybody mm -hmm. if they want to make something of themselves and have that opportunity here. Mm -hmm. And that's something that I really, really, really respect and enjoy about this country the most because back home in Canada, it wouldn't be like that. First of all, there's a big chance that like the government would shut you down before you even had a chance. Mm -hmm. um, and then it's, you know, if you're going up against, you know, the big guys or like even people who are on your same playing field, it's all like, you know, what is it necessarily like, wouldn't go as far as to say like backstabbing, but the, <laughs> there's a lot of like, yeah, it, you know what I mean? Like, it, it's, it's not easy to succeed without stepping on necks yeah. back home. Yeah, that's a good. Uh, yeah. Whereas here it seems like the entrepreneurs are all working together uh, toward a, a, a prosperous future for everybody. Yeah. You go to the street vendors in Libertad, like you were mentioning, and people aren't trying to steal your business from other vendors. Uh, they are referring you to other vendors mm -hmm. and saying, hey, this person also has these things that mm -hmm. you can get. And this person, you can get, like, if you go into the vendors and you're open and, and at ease, you'll be like a, um, a pinball going back and forth from stall to stall as you get referred everywhere because yeah. everyone's working together to increase their businesses as kind of one community. Yeah. There's a business community here, not a business gladiator war zone, <laughs> right? Yeah. So it's fascinating. Um, so you, you, you mentioned in the beginning, uh, there's a lot of people from around the world coming to El Salvador, would it be, you know, as tourists or, you know, permanently, uh, it seems like this is the melting pot, right? I mean, that uh, I mean, because yeah. I was, you know, I I spent uh, just a short time, maybe in New York, and in, 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 like five years in total in California, Los Angeles, and 
But for me, that was already like a melting pot. But the way, you know, the pictures or the whatever documentaries or, or, or videos I see or the testimonials you're giving, it's like I have the impression that this could be the ultimate mel melting pot, you know, a peaceful, mm -hmm. you know, society from all around the world. It's it uh, must be, yeah, um, inspiring, you know. Well, you know, credit for that is 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 owed entirely to the people of El Salvador who are just, I mean, the welcome that we've received and that people we know have received mm -hmm. has been just overwhelming. Um, there is a sense of, we're so happy you're here. Thank you for choosing El Salvador. Thank you for being here in El Salvador. Thank you for helping El Salvador just by being here. Yeah. There's a warmth, a receptiveness, and a genuine interest in who are you? What's your story? What's your background? Do you know this about El Salvador? Do you want to try this or experience this, this aspect of the culture? Do you want to know this about our heritage? They want to share the story with you and they want to integrate you into the community. Um, on our YouTube channel, uh, we were astounded to discover that like 60% of our audience is, is Salvadorans living abroad, um, which I guess makes sense in retrospect, but <laughs> we didn't expect that in the beginning. And we keep hearing in the comments, in the emails, and in the Twitter. And by the way, if any of you guys are watching, thank you so much. Yes. Um, the, over and over again, you guys are Salvadorans now. You're welcome to the country. Welcome, welcome to the home. family. Welcome home. Yeah, to your it? new home. Yeah. I mean, it's just, there's, there's, I mean, there's a bit of skepticism as there would be anywhere. You occasionally encounter a bit of skepticism, but by and large, overwhelmingly so, the receptiveness has made us and everyone we know feel totally at ease and at home and welcome here mm -hmm. and uh, that's that's spreading out and so you're starting to see people more and more from all over the world coming here because word is getting out about salvador is open for business yeah and uh, they want you to come that's amazing you know um, i mean i don't have to tell you that uh we, we live we live in really crazy times right now it's like uh you know freedom or slavery <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Uh, total surveillance or you know uh, whatever i mean or just you know pure freedom um uh, is do you see el salvador or um the the developments taking do you see like el salvador the place where we can finally you know hit the tipping point of a new i don't want to you know go into you know uh, utopian sci-fi but but sure, sure, yeah. do you see I like <laughs> Which I love. I mean, I, I do read a lot of scientific technological stuff, uh, but and 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 I'm a huge fan, you know, of uh, not only digital technologies, but you know, uh, we, I think there's the potential, the realistic potential to develop and to produce um, technologies in every sector we can think of. You know, with it be transportation, energy, nuclear, plasma, uh, you know, all, all sorts of uh, transportation. I mean, you know, I've always, uh, I have these discussions with a lot of my guests, you know, um, who are into this uh, also, you know, that's why I mentioned Jeff Booth because I, I, you know, I often said to Jeff Booth, you know, isn't it weird that for at least a hundred years, we haven't had like a different propulsion system in the, you know, yeah. <laughs> or whatever, you know, would it be hydrogen technology, nuclear technology? And is that something you you might be talking about or uh, or envisioning, you know, in let's maybe not in 10 years, but let's say in 20, 30 years, do you see El Salvador as the, you know, country, uh, the, right. the paradigm shift, you know, when it comes to all kinds of technological comfort for, you know, to serve humanity, to serve the society? and create think, abundance um perhaps but i don't i don't know I'm speaking personally but i don't think that it will be just el salvador yeah. i believe that it'll be more so yeah and there, there will be a shift mm -hmm. and it'll happen when el salvador and central america all central america central central american mm -hmm. countries become the first world mm -hmm. and that way, you know, say if you have kids and you, you come here or we have kids, mm -hmm. we may unfortunately get to the point where, you know, we will have to say to them, well, like, you know, well, eat all your food because, you know, people in Canada, you know, they, they were or like, like they're, they're, yeah. we believe there will be a shift, yeah. whether it's like yeah. economically 
or yeah, yeah. Eat, eat all your eat all your supper because people in Canada all they have is mealworm slurry yeah coming out of a hole in the wall in their yeah. pod and I mean God forbid that yeah. ever happens like <laughs> yeah. you know it, it is our home and it, yeah. it, it does hurt to think about yeah that kind of stuff but I think that it's it won't be just El Salvador alone mm -hmm. it will be all the yeah El Salvador is going to be setting an example yeah uh, yeah. for for the rest of the world mm -hmm. and i think we're going to reach an inflection point where nation states around the world are going to have to decide what direction they want to go do they want to go the cbdc world economic forum direction or do they want to go the decentralized power bitcoin direction and uh, this country is setting the 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 alternative example mm -hmm. it's already uh, starting Yes, and because it's the first mover, it has that first mover advantage. Right. And as those lines are drawn, and we start to see that the, 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 I guess you could say almost bipolar world, uh, the dual system where one is absolute tyranny and the other is mm -hmm. characterized by liberty, uh, El Salvador having the first move move on the liberty side is, is going to be sort of the, the, the genesis block of the new world. And we will see, I believe, I hope, um, as the cynic and pessimist of our, of us, I still hope that um, we will see El Salvador become known in history for its inventions, its innovations, its contributions uh, that spread around the world and improve the lives of millions or billions uh, into the next uh, century. I love uh, that. Yeah, yeah. Really, yeah. Are we certain that it'll happen? I mean, of course, we're not certain of anything, right? But we do know that of all the places on Earth where it that kind of thing could happen, the greatest likelihood by far is right here in El Salvador. Mm -hmm. Well, I love that. Love that vision. Yeah. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, in a lot of conversations I've had, it's uh, uh, or there's some you know people who uh, who know you know more knowledgeable than me, but uh, they say, you know, they we don't need like a huge like critical mass. It just needs maybe three, five, or maybe maximum six or seven percent of the population of the Earth's population of the Earth's, you know, mm -hmm. structures or, or nation states to adopt Bitcoin. You know, to go into hyper Bitcoinization drive. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, what what is the critical mass for you? I mean, because there there will be eventually sooner or later there will be neighboring countries or other countries in Latin America and in Africa. What is that tipping point for you? Is hmm. interesting question. What do you think? What is what is? I never really thought about it before. We, yeah. We, what does it look like when we say we've made it? We're there. What does it look like? Because you then, know, like, you know, it's I just going to be a chain reaction. You know, it's just going to be yeah. in overdrive. Well, I think there's a lot of people who are who are expecting that you know every merchant everywhere will take Bitcoin, and and now. Right. There, there's a surf shop down in uh, Palmar that doesn't take Bitcoin. Therefore, the experiment has failed and we're not getting anywhere. And it's a big flop. And, you know, and it's been one year. Right. Um, we hear that there are there are some Bitcoiners down here who are who are very impatient and want all of it now and are very disappointed that uh, sometimes they have to use fiat garbage. Yeah. Um, and, you know, I get it. Fair enough. Yeah. I don't, I'm done with it, too. <laughs> but um, yeah. Um, I think, yeah, like you said, this, this is a chain reaction type process and it's, it's bit by bit, yeah. um, one piece at a time. Mm -hmm. There are, um, like, like Bitcoin beach over in El Zante, everyone's familiar with that. I'm sure, uh, that, that seed is, has blossomed, produced a fruiting tree. And now new seeds are starting to sprout in Guatemala, in Nicaragua, in Honduras, uh, little bits here bitcoin lake bitcoin island bitcoin jungle the the they, they've taken the white paper of bitcoin beach which they released open source and are now implementing that plan in their own country okay. so we're starting to see not just production but reproduction of of the idea and it's slow it's organic but it's yeah. like slowly then suddenly right yeah it's like yeah. when like you know the telephone was invented yeah. at some point or another there was only five telephones in the entire world. Exactly, yeah. yeah. And it took what, like fifty to sixty-five years for the, the whole world, whole world yeah. to like yeah. be on board with it. Yeah. And hopefully, that you know, with modern day technology, it takes a lot less time. Exactly, than as we can see, fifty right? to sixty-five right. years right. to get there. Yeah. But um, I think it's it's on a good trajectory, and 
Yeah. I think we're going to get there. This is my estimate, maybe mm -hmm. like in the next 20, yeah. 20 years. 20 yeah. That's years conservative, years. I think, to be honest with you. I think it's Yeah, good. maybe yeah. it is conservative. Yeah. <laughs> it's cautious. It's a good cautious yeah. estimate, yeah, or, or approximation. Um, mm -hmm. I was going to say, um, well, anyway, uh, it's, it's, it's really... Um, so let me, because in one of your videos, or was it on Twitter, where you, uh, you know, you show your sort of a green card? Is that like a, your permanent residency card? Temporary. Temporary residency. Yeah. Do you want to like talk about like, are there any advantages or if you want to establish a business or tax wise, tax incentive, is there anything like you can, you want to share with um, the listeners? Well, um, first thing that comes to mind is, so as we mentioned in the beginning, uh, like, yes, we were in a tropical paradise, there's beaches, we have a swimming pool over there, and it's very lovely. Uh, but the circumstances of our arrival here were, were somewhat uh, traumatic. And we did have to leave our home country, and we're not here entirely by choice. Uh, we were forced to make this decision. Don't get me wrong, we're thrilled to be here, we love this country, uh, and we feel very blessed to be here. Uh, but, you know, there's there was, um, there, there was some pain around that transition. Um, and when we first arrived here, we had just our 90 day tourist visas. And those are highly cancelable. And uh, that like, that clock is ticking. Yeah, like it was right? like a timer. <laughs> yeah. And uh, we did not want to go back to no. Canada. Uh, and there was an, a sense of urgency to get the visa situation sorted out, to get the, the temporary residency permit sorted out. Uh, so that we can just breathe out and be like, okay, no one's putting us on a plane where we don't have to go back or we don't have to go to a different country and we can, we can start to settle and, and establish ourselves here. That's, yeah. that's point number one, getting that permit to be here for a year, which is the type we got, um, gives us some time to just get breathe settled a in a little bit. So that just mentally, it's huge to have that. Yeah. Um, it has enabled us to open our first bank account here. Uh, which, um, you know, we, the only reason we have it is so YouTube can pay us. <laughs> so, but other than that, we don't need it. Um, With less and, bureaucracy, uh, I guess, you know, I mean, or hardly any bureaucracy. Is that like very bureaucracy? Bureauc yeah, it's, or, well, everything is negotiable here, right? Yeah. Like when we first went to the bank to, uh, to open the account, they said, uh, no, no, you have to have a permanent residency, not a temporary and then our interpreter and friend who was with us just started speaking in Spanish to the teller and they went on for five minutes. And next thing you know, they're opening a bank account for us. <laughs> so, um, but uh, the, having the card, it's for us mainly, it's, it's the, the ability to say, yes, we have permission to be here. We've done it the right way. We have legal permission to be here and we're abiding by the law. Yeah. And um, uh, it's, it's given us some, some latitude to start engaging in different types of transactions like we have a motorcycle now and we've registered it and whatnot um and it's also uh, the step towards citizenship uh, you have to be here for five years as a foreigner to to work your way towards citizenship and having this card is the first year of that and uh, now we're on the way yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. so uh there was this talk about like if you invest what was that i don't know the amount was a hundred thousand dollars or something or, or in Bitcoin, you know, denominated where you can like literally buy yourself the permanent residency or citizenship. Yeah. You said yeah. three Bitcoin, wasn't it? I think it was three Bitcoin. Yeah. And uh -huh. I'm not sure if that program was ever rolled out. Mm -hmm. uh, that's not the path we took. Um, I, I guess it's different for everybody. Uh, like our situation was pretty straightforward. We're both online workers. We're digital nomads. And there's a visa for that. It's called the F3 um, or F3B visa. Um, and uh, for us, it was very straightforward. But there's there's visas for missionaries, for people who want to go to school here. Mm -hmm. There's visas for starting a business. Uh, there's one, I believe, that is an investment-oriented visa. Uh, if you want more information about that, the people to talk to are uh, escape to El Salvador. Jeremy, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Jeremy, yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. yeah. He, um, he handled our case with white gloves, and uh, was an absolute master for us yeah. uh, and took care of us yeah. as we were awesome. freaking out being like jeremy oh my god we don't want to go back home yeah. help us yeah and yeah. i mean like yeah. i think the biggest yeah. the coolest thing about working with jeremy is that and i don't mean to get all sappy on if if he's hearing um i'm just so happy that like at the end of all of this 
he's become our friend. Like, yeah. We, he's just one of the most amazing guys we've ever, mm-hmm. ever met. He's so patient and mm-hmm. he, he is an endless book of knowledge. You can come to him with anything, yeah, yeah. any question. I, I really love his presentations. I never talked to him like personally on the, on the phone, but I, I had some yeah. chit chat like per DM. But but his presentation was it like um, what was the conference? Um, Bitcoin. Bitcoin. Bitcoin exactly. I mean the way you know, and then on the on the pods he he went uh, or or the interviews he he, he did is or the presentations he did. It's just very you know calm and sober yeah. and fact fact factual based. Yeah. You know it's it's amazing. Yeah. So yeah. he's Jeremy really recently awesome. had a Christmas party on Christmas Day at his house, and uh, he invited us and, and many others. And uh, what an experience that was. Mm-hmm. Uh, a condo full of of people from all over the world, uh, including a good number of Canadians, and everyone is sharing their harrowing stories of narrowly escaping their countries and all the bizarre and strange things they had to do to get out of their countries and get to El Salvador. And Jeremy has worked with all of them to one extent or another to create a legal path for them to uh, come to this country and, and start putting down roots. It was marvelous to witness that, yeah. and uh, I can only imagine what it must feel like for Jeremy to be, look at this number of people in his home that um, uh, are there in part because of uh, what his organization uh, has helped to, uh, to do in this world. It's um, it was great. Yeah. It was fantastic. Yeah, awesome. Well, anyway, uh, you know, um, I mean, we've been talking. I've been talking with uh, with my girlfriend, and uh, about you know our future, and uh, we, we definitely got to go, got to come to El Salvador, you know, and and really experience it. Just you know, it's, it's no way around it. But uh, we we do. I mean, we we have brainstorm about uh, you know establishing a business because she ha- she has her own business. You know, she has. Uh, She's into she she her background is actually a laboratory, but she's like totally into botanic botanical stuff and natural mm-hmm. holistic healing and health, you know, and extraction processes. And so, you know, everything organic, biological. So right. this is something I, I was thinking uh, if El Salvador, the government El Salvador could loosen up or as you said, you know, reduce like uh, substantially, like bureaucracy, uh, increase even more, you know, the tax in- tax incentives, uh, whatever regulatory environment there is, you know, like loosen it up and and or with its, you know, if we're talking like for example about cannabis, you know, THC or uh, all these all, all these other uh, substances that are still, let's say, uh, but I'm just talking about like medical medical application, right. you know, right. that, that would be like a great. Um, yeah, uh, a great idea, you know, to to come to El Salvador and and establish business there, create a business not only business opportunities but create employment for for the mm-hmm. native, you know, for, not only for native people, but people in living in El Salvador, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, so um, yeah, um, do you do you see some sort of a, a development there, like or discussions uh, on on let's say on a political level to. To, to accelerate this process besides hyper-Bitcoinization? Right. Well, what we, as far as we understand, if you're coming into El Salvador to open a business, there is a price tag to that, uh, to get that set up. And it's somewhat higher than is standard around the world. We understand that's true. It's after that's done, uh, you're, you're not dealing with so many guardrails, boundaries, and restrictions on what you can do. Uh, in terms of regulatory burden here in El Salvador, well, so there's essentially no regulations around the kind of lights you can have on your car. You can have strobe lights and, and LEDs all the way around, and your blinkers can can uh, be different colors. And it's, it's if that's the case with the vehicle regulations, I imagine anyway, we don't own a business here. Uh, we, we would imagine that the regulatory environment around business is equally, um, shall we say, liberal. Mm-hmm. Um, so there is that. Uh, we have seen not so much, because we haven't looked into it, not so much the uh, the letter of the law and how it's changing, but more so just the, the rate at which businesses are opening and are being opened by Salvadorans and, and uh, uh, expats alike. Uh, if it were difficult, uh, or if there was a lot of red tape like there is in our home country, we just wouldn't see that happening. Uh, the, the the pace and volume of businesses that are opening strongly suggests that there's opportunity here, and the barriers are few. 
do you see like would uh, do you see like circular more circular um, uh, so-called circular economies uh scaling up or um unfolding in the next few years i mean that would be amazing you know like let's say neighboring countries or or within el salvador you know like cr creating uh you know when we talk about free private cities or bitcoin mm -hmm. cities or smaller free private cities do you see like something like that along the lines where all of a sudden you know there's like a huge substantial increase in whatever import export trading uh with with the unit of account of bitcoin <laughs> uh, right well i guess to have a true circular economy you would have to have um a, a, a collection of nation states that all have the resources each other needs to be sufficient self-sufficient uh right now at some point along the supply chain, there is a U.S. dollar denominated terminus. Somewhere someone has to exchange Bitcoin for U.S. dollars in order to do business, whether because of their jurisdiction or whatever it happens to be, there still is that. And so while we're seeing, you know, the initial signs of the Bitcoin circular economy here, and certainly there's people who are dedicated to that project and are building it uh, with everything they have every day, um, as long as that USD denominated terminus exists, there's going to be a break in that chain and the, the USD price of Bitcoin is going to have an impact on how that economy is run. Um, that's just going to be true until it isn't. And I think we're looking at just a matter of time before that just isn't true anymore mm -hmm. as this project expands and grows out into countries that have different resources and different things that can be denominated in Bitcoin and that different countries and different communities need. Yeah, well, and, I think it, yeah. mm -hmm. and I think like it's important to note like you know how as of right now in the current market everything is down everything is you know yeah. people aren't as inclined to jump on board mm -hmm. yeah with the but like I've I've said this before in other conversations I've had with people that it's more important to educate people when you're down mm -hmm. so that when that's right the inevitable happens there will be a bigger like and there won't be people clamoring being like oh it's like you know fomo and exactly you know, yeah. you know? so you, you just you know you, you need to put in the grand work when when you're mm -hmm. at the bottom before to to be yeah. to be prepared yeah yeah you're you know? right you're totally right They're all about education and preparing yeah. people preparation preparation and comprehension and and then you know then eventually people are gonna have even more you know optimism and 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 mm -hmm. experience yeah. you know, the the you know the yeah <laughs> yeah and I think like a lot of people say oh you know bear market uh, El Salvador lost fifty million dollars on their Bitcoin and and we'll just not talk about the tourism dollars that are coming in and how they've gained much more than they've lost and it's just a paper loss but we won't talk about that but leaving all that aside. I don't know. Maybe you, you agree. I don't know. But I think this bear market has been absolutely the right thing uh, for a country that just adopted Bitcoin. Because mm -hmm. what we're seeing is the education on what Bitcoin is and how to use it is happening when emotions are not running too high. Emotions are calm. They're low. Mm -hmm. People are like, well, I mean, what's the big deal? OK, let's find out about it. Let's learn. They get that foundation in place before we have a manic blow off top, which gets everybody all like wound up and emotional. The next thing you know, they're buying Ethereum and Luna and yeah. Polka dot and <laughs> like, like uh, having this bear market to give us a period of time to sort of get the word out about what Bitcoin is, why it's different, how to use it, I think is it's a blessing, a tremendous blessing for this country. Yeah. Otherwise, we'd have a lot of people getting burned as they, you know, they first hear about Bitcoin and then yeah. like so many, including us, move on into as you could say, ship coins to avoid yeah. the profanity. <laughs> yeah. Civil yeah. Coins. yeah. It's, 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 uh, but, but what I really, uh, love, you know, uh, um, reading about, or, or when I, when I hear about, you know, the educational process in, in El Salvador or, you know, all these kids in schools are being taught and empowered, you know, with the, with the knowledge of Bitcoin and, uh, what, what is that program called? First Diplo Diploma or something? Um, yeah. Primer Bitcoin. Me, yeah, Me Primer Bitcoin. It's really touching. It's really because, you know, 
uh, if you don't start with the children, wh where do you start? You know, so this is yeah. sort of a, a really empowering out of the box, you know, education for, for people to, yeah, it's, it's, I'm, I'm, it's mind boggling. It's, it's uh, the rate of speed that things are going on in, in El Salvador. It's, it's, uh, it really makes me, makes me more than optimistic. It makes me really excited. Yeah. Um, yeah. We had the great honor and privilege to attend a Bitcoin diploma graduation ceremony oh, really? in Taco. Yeah, uh, we joined the the boys at uh, Me Primer Bitcoin out there for the ceremony, captured some footage as well. And, you know, there was a few moments where we stepped back and we we're just like, wow, look at this. Look at this. These people are holding a diploma that says Bitcoin on it. And we know that that diploma means they can set up a hardware wallet, recover with the seed phrase, custody their Bitcoin, understand the importance of custodying their Bitcoin, and they understand the history of money and why Bitcoin fixes this. Exactly. this these are children. These are uh, yeah. junior high kids and high school kids who understand that and are holding up a diploma that says they understand that. It's got the Bitcoin word on it, and they're smiling and they're so happy. Yeah. Like, what does a country look like after a generation has been raised? That exactly. Way? Yeah. And, and hey, let's be honest. I mean, we never had education about money. No. What is money? You know, I no. mean, this is so such a paradigm shift and, and uh, civilizational, you know, shift. Uh, it's 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 really it's it's I mean, more than exciting. You know, this yeah. is where where evolution, you know, takes place. You know, it's it's all starts with with the comprehension and empowerment of children, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, not, you know, indoctrinating them you know with this traditional school system which i'm not a fan anymore that's why i'm a huge fan of you know you you probably you you know daniel bitten i mean uh, uh, daniel prince of once bitten podcast it's he's like the the expert on, on homeschooling and uh, yeah, yeah. So a huge fan of, of 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 his you know of his uh knowledge and 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 his mission you know uh, to uh to uh, uh yeah boost uh homeschooling you know and and um, free the mind free the mind of children you know yeah. right yeah like when uh, when i was a child my uh, my education and money came in this form um i had a dollar a week allowance as a child and for 50 weeks almost an entire year i saved up my dollar a week allowance in a bank account that my parents had helped me open right and this was now enough to purchase a bike which is all i wanted i just wanted a bike right i was saving for a bike and i went to the bank to get my $50 out so that I could buy my bike. And the teller at the bank said, she started grilling me being like, what do you need all this money for? Jesus. Why are you taking out all this money? Oh my God. What are you going to spend it on? What, what is this about? Tell me what you're planning to do here. I'm like eight years old. Like, and I'm, I'm just, yeah, right. <laughs> and nailed, that's, what nailed, that's exactly yeah. what it's about. Yeah. Uh -huh. uh, but like, so the, the lesson that I learned there was that your money isn't really yours. Your use of it is permissioned. Uh, you have to obtain authorization yeah. and you, the the control of your life belongs to institutions that was the that was the education i got in money as a child and everyone else in canada got that education as a child through that experience or ones like it here in el salvador the education in money is a that's wrong and immoral exactly. and b here's the technology to prevent anyone from ever doing that to you or your children or your children's children forever yeah uh, amazing amazing yeah. and you and if you're watching this you have to come here and see it exactly yeah. yeah yeah and you know our daughter or our the children of this generation i mean they're going to grow up and they're going to laugh <laughs> like you know they're going to go to museums and <laughs> it's like yeah. what the fuck you know i mean <laughs> this, this you know so that's right anyway um Jessica Ryan, uh, it was a huge pleasure talking to you. It's not only informative, Likewise. inspirational, but really, um, uh, it it makes me. Uh, it's it's beyond hope. You know, hope is such a hopium word, but but mm -hmm. uh, it gives me, um, you know, so much confidence and trust. You know, in that we can achieve this, we can make this happen. You know, uh, may the powers be whatever. You know, uh, <laughs> but uh, we can we can do this. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. um, is there anything like? Um, we should we should mention before we wrap up and maybe you can also you know share your information like where where people can find yeah. you and... yeah, yeah sure of course yeah you can find us on youtube we are two people in paradise um uh, we are on with the channel we are documenting our journey here our story here as well as the the journey and story of the country mm -hmm. uh, we talk a little bit about bitcoin but really that's kind of in the background we're more interested in telling the story of el salvador 
and uh, what what these people of El Salvador are doing, um, having been empowered by Bitcoin. Mm-hmm. Um, and you can also find us on Twitter. We are at Two People in Para. Uh, can't miss us. Uh, and we also recommend that you head over to escape to El Salvador dot org. If you're thinking about making a move to El Salvador, talk to Jeremy. And uh, if you do so, please use the code Paradise People to receive a discount. And of course, uh, we uh, we also uh, get an acknowledgement for that as well. So <laughs> just being transparent. Yes, of right? course, yeah. Um, we're really looking forward. I mean, if we ever come to El Salvador, we'd, we'd love please. to you know, yes. meet you guys yeah. for coffee, as I can yeah, see yeah. on your YouTube channel right now. Uh, yeah, yeah. What's the name of your YouTube channel again? Two People in Paradise. Two yeah. People in Paradise, yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, gotcha. All right. So, okay. yeah. Um, Thank you so much again, and um, I'll Here's hopefully talk to you soon in the near future. And take care, guys. Okay. Wonderful. Right. Thank you. Thank you, Kevin. Bye. 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 Bye.